Hey, this is the 17th installment of the Exile Challenge, James chapter 5. Uh, and I bet everyone is asking the question, is it wrong to be rich? Well, that's a great question. And I think the short answer is, well, no, it's not wrong to be rich. So if we just look at the description in uh, verses 1 to 6 there, um, it's talking about a, it seems, uh, a, a rich people in general, but mainly focused on the pagan rich person, a person who is using their riches, their power, in order to oppress people who are, quote unquote, below them. And that, I think that's what the people that James is writing to are facing. One of the trials that they're facing is that they're being oppressed by the rich, and, um, I mean, that's why James talks about um, the rich in James chapter 1, saying that the rich need to uh, remember their humble uh, situation or remember their humiliation. I think that's in verse 10 and 11. Uh, he talks about the rich in chapter 2 um, and how, how the people that he's writing to were showing partiality to, to the rich and to the poor, they're partial to the rich because they're wanting, maybe they're wanting power, they're wanting influence, um, they're wanting this oppression to stop, they're trying to appease the rich people. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he continues on and, and we hear, we see the uh, rich being talked about here. And uh, their um, oppression, their, um, their dishonesty, their self-indulgence, all those kinds of things. And so my, my main thought is, uh, as I was just reading through here, is how do we handle um, when we go through times of oppression? Maybe there are people that um, are treating us unjustly. <clears throat> and how do we handle that? Well, I think in our, in our particular system, we would try to take them to court. But and there are times when we might not have we might not have the money to do so, uh, and they might have all the power. I mean, if you hear story after story about how uh, there are some wicked, cruel people out there who have a lot of money, and in order to silence other people or um, put them in a terrible situation, either economically or whatever it might be, they'll take them to court and drag that court session out as long as they can. Um, and drain all that other person's finances completely and just ruin their lives that way. Just just evil, wicked stuff that goes on. Um, and maybe some of you have heard those kinds of stories before. Uh, so what do we do when we're being oppressed? Maybe not in that way, but uh, in an unjust way. Well, James gives us this um, lesson here. He says, be patient until the coming of the Lord. Be patient. That is, that is absolutely difficult to do. Uh, as we see the, the wicked prospering, and um, in their scheming, they um, bring down the righteous. I don't know if you're in that situation now, I'd kind of be surprised in our youth group of anybody in that situation, but there could be a time in the future where that might happen. Um, how do we handle it? Patience. We wait on the Lord. We use every means we can um, possible given to us through our uh, our system of government governance that we have and the, uh, the laws and um, legal system that we can. Uh, but there are times when even the le legal system is can be unjust. <clears throat> So we need, to, we need to trust in the one true lawgiver. We need to trust in the judge who will come and he will judge righteously. And so he reminds us to look to Job. Look to Job in his situation. Not that Job, well, I guess in some sense was uh, going through a difficult time. It wasn't because of anything that he did. But the Lord had a purpose in it all. And James wants to remind us that we need to consider Job. We need to remember his steadfastness, his patience in that. We need to remember the purpose of the Lord in his situation, which was to humble him 
and help him to look up to the greatness of his God. Remember, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. For the testing of your faith produces patience. And let patience have its perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. And maybe you're going through a difficult time right now. And James, in James chapter 5, reverts back again to James chapter 1. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And let these trials, the testing of your faith, produce patience. And let patience have its perfect work that you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. And remembering this, not only remember the steadfastness and patience of Job, uh, not only remember the purpose of the Lord in this, but remember that the Lord is compassionate and the Lord is merciful. And he will make all things right. Well, there's much more that could be said here. It's, it's interesting how James kind of brings back themes throughout uh, the book. And almost we kind of see a little bit of a summation of the things that he's already, uh, already spoken about. The next uh, verse, verse 12, he talks about uh, swearing oaths. Um, so he's talking about words. Um, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Um, he, he goes on to talk about prayer and the prayer of faith, which he talked about in James, James 1. Um, let those who lack wisdom pray. And let that person ask in faith, nothing wavering. And, and then lastly, he says, hey, if there's anybody who's wandering from the truth, someone needs to bring him back. And if you bring him back, remember that uh, you'll save a soul from death and you'll cover a multitude of sins. Reminds us that we have a responsibility to one another to help each other out. To, to pull one another back if one of us is wondering. Well, I look forward to getting back back with you guys again. We'll see what happens. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to continue on, and we're going to, um, tomorrow, Friday, we're going to start with Esther uh, chapter 1. Esther chapter 1 should be a wonderful book to go through. Esther is an awesome book. Uh, so I hope you join me again for the Exile Challenge starting with Esther 1. I encourage you again, go to the Driven webpage, write a comment down, uh, devotional thought, um, prayer request, uh, anything going on in your life, question you might have about the book of James or anything else. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear from you. All right, well, you have a wonderful day. God bless. Live for the Lord.